Today's tutorial will cover all navigation scenarios using named routing. If you're new to the Foldstack channel, please subscribe and I hope you enjoy this tutorial. We'll start off by generating a Flutter project called named routing. We'll just clean up the main file and set the title of our project to named routing. The first thing to do is set up our on generate route callback so that we can generate the routes based on the names passed in. This function returns a route of type dynamic and it expects a route settings parameter. We'll create a new file called router. We'll import the material package and then we'll create a top level function with a signature that we just saw called generate route. Then over in the main file, we'll import our router and we'll give it an alias of router. And then we'll set the on generate route callback to our generate route function. Let's create two views that we can use to navigate to. We'll start with a home view. It will be a simple stateless widget called home view. We will return a scaffold and we will center some text for the body. Then we can go ahead and copy that file and rename it to login view. And in the file itself, we can rename all the references to home to login. Next up, we'll do the actual navigation. Go back to the router file. In the generate route functions, the settings passed in contains a property called name. That's what we will use to determine which route to navigate to. We'll implement a switch statement and we'll switch on the name property on the settings parameter. The first case will be just a forward slash and we will use this to return our home view. The routes will wrap in a material page route. You can use a Cupertino route if you want to. For now, we'll just use material page routes. And for the second case, we will just check if the text matches login and then we'll return a material page route that returns our login view to the builder. And for our default view for now, we'll just set it to the home view because we'll handle our unknown routes later. I don't like having these magic values floating around because you'll have to retype it later. So we'll create a file called routing constants where we'll store these values. In this file, you can create constant strings. The first one will be the home view route and the value will just be a forward slash. And the second one will be our login view route and the value will be login. Now we can go back to the router file and replace the string values with the constants that we just set up. The last thing to do to get a working example is to set our initial route equal to the route we want to start at. And for us, that will be the home view route. And if you run the code now, you should see that the app starts up on the home view. Next up, I'll show you how to handle a route that you navigate to that's not defined in your app. We'll start by creating the view that is shown when the undefined route has been navigated to. We'll create a new file called undefined view. This file will be a simple stateless widget called undefined view. It will have a scaffold that centers some text and that text will say that the route for the name is not defined. Name will be a parameter that we pass in so we can add that to the top. We'll create a final string value called name and we'll pass that as a name parameter through the constructor. The first way to handle your undefined routes is by returning it from the default value in the router file. This is my preferred way because it keeps all of your navigation code in the same file. The second way to handle this is through a property on the material app that Flutter provides us called on unknown route. This function has the exact same signature. It provides us with the settings through the parameter and you just have to return your material page route based on that settings. And for us, that would just be the undefined route. We'll remove that for now because we'll only be using the one in the generate route function. Next up, we'll do some actual navigation. We'll add a floating action button. And in the on press of the floating action button, we will call our navigator and we'll push a named route using the login view route. This will cause the navigator to call our router function and it will create a new login view material page route and set that as the new view. Then we'll cover how to pass arguments to a view that you're navigating to. We'll start by going to the login view and adding a parameter called argument into the constructor and then setting that to a final string value called argument. We will also display this argument value next to the login view text in the center of the screen. Then where we navigate in the home view, we can now pass in the arguments, which as you can see is just an object. So you can pass anything you want, a class, a number, strings. For us, we'll just pass a string and we'll pass in the value passed in argument. The last thing to do is to extract this argument from the settings and pass it into our login view. So we'll create a new variable called argument and we'll get the arguments from the settings value. And then we can pass that in through the name parameter in our login view called argument. 
And if you run the code now and navigate, you should see that if you navigate, it passes in the argument and shows it in the center of the screen. Next up, we'll look at how to navigate back programmatically. So go to the login view and add a floating action button. And in the unpressed call, we will call navigator.pop and pass in the context. If you press your floating action button on the login screen, you'll see that you navigate back to the home view. Then we can look at how to return the result from a navigation. So if you go to the definition, you'll see that all the navigation calls are future that returns a type of T. What that means for us is that we can simply just await the call and then the code on the calling side will continue once the new view has been closed. We'll check if the value of the navigation result equals from login and if it does, we'll show a dialog. And for the body of this dialog that will define through the boulder, we'll return an alert dialog and we'll set the title equal to text. And we'll just say from login in the text. If you navigate to the login view now and navigate back, you'll see that there's no alert dialog that pops up. And that's because we're not returning any values. So you can go to the login view and in the pop call, there's a second parameter that we can pass in and you can set it to any object that you like. If you navigate to login and navigate back now, you'll see that the dialog pops up because we're returning the from login value to the calling function. Next up, we'll cover how to intercept the back button press. To intercept the back button on a view, you have to wrap the scaffold in a widget called the wall pop scope. This widget has a callback called on wall pop scope that expects a future that returns a boolean. If you return false to this function, it means that the system will not handle the back press. So if you run this code now and you try to navigate back from the login view with a back button, you'll see that nothing happens. And if you still want to return a value from the back press, you can change the on wall pop into a proper function and we will call navigator.pop at the beginning and for the return value we'll return false to indicate to the OS that we've handled the navigation ourselves. And navigating back now from the login view with the back button will also pass the value back to our calling function. That's everything you need for navigation using named routing. I hope you've enjoyed this. Please like and subscribe and I'll see you guys next week.